Hello. Good evening. How are you today? Can you hear me? Seems like three of you are in, but I don't know if you're able to speak. So welcome to today's class. We're going to start from what we left the last um, week. We were studying superlatives. So this is where we're going to start from. Okay, as you may remember, in case that you are there, you remember that last week we were studying the superlatives. And uh, yes, we were saying that the superlatives is not to compare just, it's for comparing more than two things or probably one in a group. And they are formed by adding the article D and then the EST are the end, or if the objective ends in the letter E, which is add ST. And uh, there were some um, exceptions, like for example, the adjectives with two or more syllables, we were supposed just to add the at the beginning, then the adjective as it is, and then most. And after that, the exceptions with why, what happens with adjectives with two syllables and in why, we need to change it to I, and add uh, the article, right? And also how to double the last consonant. We also discussed that there are some irregular adjectives and we had uh, a list here that they are the most common. Being said that, the next exercise that we have is the superlative quiz. So we're going to- Good evening, teacher. This. Good evening, Belen, how are you today? Yes. Very good, teacher. Very good. Very good. Nice to hear that. So uh, nice we're today. going. I started to read the book that I already told you. Oh really? And was it interesting? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I may quiero ver cómo sería. Alice in Wonderland. Oh, uh, I have some some difficult words because it's like a uh, British English. <laughs> So have some different uh, words uh, and I have to translate, but the, the Kindle has a dictionary so I can read the, the definitions, uh, the definitions of the words. Yeah. And some definitions even doesn't exist in that dictionary. It's because it's some kind of words that only use it for British. I will search for another and I will tell you later. Okay, perfect. You can share that with us as well. Thank you so much. So I was saying that there is um, like a superlative quiz, but you know, this is just to exercise what we learned the last week. Uh, this is not evaluated, just an exercise to see what you remember about the last class about superlatives. And this is just about superlatives. Uh, we can do this in groups. So you can discuss the answers. If it's the, what is the option that best completes the sentence or question that we have here? Uh, the letter A, B, or C, and you decide in the group. After you have decided all the correct answers according to your knowledge, you can check the answers here in this link. So I'm going to create the breakout rooms. And remember first, you do the quiz together, okay? Discuss the answers. And after, when you have finished, go to this link and then you will find the answers. Are we okay with the instructions? Yes, teacher. Okay, uh, this is, uh, you have this in your uh, material that I already sent. This is part of a last week class, so I'm going to make the breakup rooms. And before we go to the rooms, allow me to, um, yeah, allow you to share. Yeah. 
No, no es para comer, ese es... Teacher, mm -hmm. I found some, uh, someone, no, I found one, ¿cómo sería? Encontré una. Un, ¿Una? ¿Qué? Ajá, encontré una palabra. Ah, oh, one word. Ah, I found a uh, one word. Uh, it's waistcoat pocket, but it's, uh, es como está solo separado por un guión. Ni siquiera el diccionario lo pudo traducir. Porque es una sola palabra, pero waistcoat y luego el guión y luego pocket. And you can write it in Google and search images. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. it has a phrase. Uh, this is something I want to ask you. Hung upon pegs. Creo que esa es una frase de ellos. Mm, can be an idiom. You can write idiom. it in the chat and we can investigate. Okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome.
Just a couple of seconds to get the rest into the room. I think that we learned something new today, right, Belen? Yes, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. And uh, I found a phrase. Um, I sent you the image, and it says like it is also like to be hung up on a purpose, like not like literally, right? Yes. So interesting, but, but it's kind of strange because in the for for example, they have a, a, a word all together, and that's how we write all together. Really? I, I, that was my first time that I read that word. Uh, for, because for me, it's all together. But in mm -hmm. this case, it's all together. Uh, and the dictionary just says totalmente. Mm. Well, we can investigate that as well. So you can write it in the chat and we can learn something new. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's nice. Okay, and how was the exercise? Did you get 10? Everybody got 10? Yes, teacher. We finished. Awesome. And the result, you get all the answers correct, or are there are some um, doubts about it? We think we have a 10. Oh, okay, excellent. And the rest of the groups? Finish, teacher. Finish. And how Finish, was it? Teacher. Was it easy, difficult? Did you get a 10? Hmm. All right. So, so. Of, so, so. How many um, wrong answers? One, two. How many wrong answers? If there is just a couple, it's okay. Teacher, I, I have a question. Yes, mommy. And the sentence is 16. The, um, teníamos la, la duda. Era the most easy o easiest. Y lo buscamos en el diccionario y los dos estaban más fácil, más fácil. Entonces, eh, queríamos preguntarle si se pueden utilizar ambas formas. Uh, according to the exercise, I guess the correct answer is the letter C, right? The most easy. The 16. Uh -huh. Let's see. The, no, the easiest. Easiest. Uh -huh. Easiest. 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 The easiest question. Uh -huh. Sí, nosotros así lo dejamos easiest, pero también lo buscamos como the, the most easiest en el diccionario y sí aparece también como el más, más fácil. The most easiest. No, the, the most easy, o sea, el, el literal C. The most easy. Well, it's like la, la, la vieja confiable, eso se puede hacer. Uh -huh. Se puede hacer, aunque lo correcto es seguir la regla y sería el literal B. ¿verdad? Por el spelling y todo, okay. eh, sería el literal B lo correcto con la regla. Pero si uno puede hacer sin seguir todas las reglas que ya vimos y ponerle a todo the most y el adjetivo tal cual. Eso se puede hacer con todos los adjetivos, con todos. Es como decir la vieja confiable. Ok. Uh -huh. Y lo mismo pasa con los comparativos. Podemos usar more, el adjetivo tal cual y luego done. Uh -huh. Ok. Thank you. We was discussed discuss about this theme. It's kind of similar to the comparative. Mm -hmm. For example, the most and and uh, it's similar to more, more than mm -hmm. more than. Mm -hmm. It is like uh, more than. Es como decir más que. Por ejemplo, más cómodo que, más bonito que. Y the most es el más, el más bonito, por ejemplo. So, eh, como les digo, existen las reglas que se, es bueno conocerlas, que son las que hemos estado aplicando, pero con ambas partes se puede omitir todo eso de estarle agregando, quitándole. El, en los comparativos dijimos que era ER en la mayoría de casos, ¿verdad? 
y poner, um, por ejemplo, colder than, etcétera. Se puede hacer. Color. Ajá, more cold than. O sea, se puede. Se puede hacer así y es como para, aplicaría para todos los adjetivos sin agregarles el, de, el er. Y en el caso de los superlativos sin agregar el st. Entonces, eso es como podríamos irnos así. Eh, pero como les digo, es correcto, sí. Pero es como queda como evidenciado que no conocemos las reglas, ¿verdad? que no se conoce la gramática. Así que si es para algo informal, sí, se puede salir de eso, de esa manera. Eh, pero si ya es para un examen, para evaluar su conocimiento y todo eso, sí es importante conocer las reglas. Teacher, and for example, uh, this is a parenthesis, the hi and the hello. The hi is it's something formal, right? And the hello, no, al revés. Mm -hmm. Sí, sí. Ah. <laughs> Hello is formal and hi is informal. So you cannot uh, apply the same to everybody, right? So it depends. Okay, mm -hmm. okay so uh, before we continue, I'm going Teacher. to check attendance. No, yes. Someone wanted to say something? Okay, so let us check attendance then. Today is 23rd. Andrea Laurena. Present teacher. Thank you so much, Andrea. Belen Batres. Present teacher. Thank you so much, Belen. Carlos Mario. Carlos Mario. Carmen René. Present teacher. Thank you, Carmen. Delmi Guadalupe. Present. Thank you so much, Francisco Nehemias. Present. Thank you, Francisco. Helen Dionelli. Helen Dionelli. Iris Joana. Present. Thank you, Iris. Jose Arnoldo. Present. Thank you, Juan Ricardo Alvarenga. Present. Sure. Thank you, Juan Ricardo Menedemo. Juan Ricardo Menedemo. Kenia Cecilia. Present teacher. Thank you, Kenia. Marisela del Carmen. Present teacher. Thank you, Marisela. Moises Alberto. I am here, teacher. Thank you, Moises. Noemi Albertina. Present teacher. Thank you, Noemi. Rafael Antonio. Present. Thank you, Rafael. Reina Margarita. Present teacher. Thank you, Reina. Rubén de Jesús. Present teacher. Thank you, Rubén. Judy Araceli. Present teacher. Thank you, Judy. Jose Rudy Acevedo. Jose Rudy. Ana Mercedes. Present teacher. Thank you. María Angélica. Present. Thank you. Imelda Elizabeth. Imelda Elizabeth. Susana. Okay, let's continue then. Let me share. Okay, so let's see. Okay, here it is. Uh, so we have how to use superlative form of adjectives, which is um what we already did, right? And we have been practicing. So in the next one, we have a review of comparatives. Let's remember that for comparatives, uh, we adjectives with one syllable, we add ER or just R, and then the, um, the word done, for example, called, 
So in this case for cold, we add ER and then the word done. In Canada, winter is colder than summer. Okay, we said that adjectives with two or more syllables, we add more than the adjectives like, uh, like it is without adding anything and we add the word done at the, at the end. Uh, unless that the adjectives is at the end, so we don't add done, right? So in this expensive, for example, this book is more expensive than that book. Then we have adjective with two syllables that any Y, we change the Y to I and add ER and then the word then. For example, happy, we said John is happier. We change the Y to I, adding ER and then the word then, and then the other part of the sentence. And adjectives that end in a single vowel and consonant, we double the letter before adding done, okay? And for example, big, Russia is bigger than Canada. And we are uh, doubling the last consonant, which is G in this case, uh, ER, and then the word done, and the complement of the sentence. This is just like a review because we have already studied this. And we have the irregular comparative adjectives, which are the most common. We said that good becomes to better than, bad gets to worse than, and far, it can be farther than or further than, and the meaning is the same, no difference. And also uh, we have, a, well, we already uh, reviewed the, Superlatives, remember that we compare two things and for superlatives is more than two things or one in a group. In it's this- a, I yeah. have a question, mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, I don't remember what is the meaning of far? It's a distance, it's like lejano. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this exercise is on page 28 of your material, but we have it here in the presentation. And we have to underline the correct word or phrase in exercise number six. I will give you a couple of minutes for you to do that. It can be in your notebook and then we're going to check. We need it.
Finished? I think yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Teacher, this acaba de, re, de venir. Okay. A volunteer for the first one. Okay. Raise your hand, please. Naomi, thank you so much. The best. And the number one, uh, yes, it's done. <laughs> so it's done. number two, don't use the best schedules yes. as a reward. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so yes. much, Naomi. I volunteer for number three. Andrea, thank you so much. And Maria Angelica, number four. The fattest. The, the fastest. Aha, uh -huh, the fastest. Okay, thank you so much, Andrea. Maria Angelica, number four. Uh, the most popular. The most popular, excellent. Belen, number five. The prettiest. The prettiest, excellent. And number six, a volunteer for number six. Can we have a volunteer for number six? Rafael? The longest. The longest, yes, that is correct. The kitchen manager works the longest shifts. Okay, so, and now we have uh, another exercise. This is to use comparatives and superlatives. They are together. So same thing, uh, we're going to get in groups and discuss the answers to the 16 items. Remember that in this case, we have both. We have comparatives and superlatives. So let me, and then we're going to check in the main section because this one didn't have a video available, <laughs> sadly. Let's uh, recreate. So we have one more. Okay, uh, there you go. Este creo que es. Este es. Sí. Vamos, Gordo. Vaya. Como hicimos la, la primera, acabamos de hacer esto. Exacto, joven. Te estoy diciendo. Ok. Ah. Como se llama comparatives a superlativos. Bueno, la número uno. Eh, sí. sí, the tallest. The, the tallest. tallest. Uh -huh. Cabal. Mount Everest is the tallest mountain in the world. Que sería un superlativo. Sí. La, 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 el número dos. Um, more intelligent than those. More intelligent than those. Than those. Ajá, cabal. Ese tiene que ser. A. Está comparando, ¿verdad? Sí. Uh -huh. More intelligent. Oh, okay. Number three. Um, number three. Number two is leader A. Was. Yes. Ajá. Okay. Who was in the oldest? Sería. Yeah. Leader A. Older. 
Reader A, the dog oldest. Oldest, the oldest. The no, oldest person that ever write. La letra so, A. Why do? The old, oldest. Okay. Eh, la cuatro. ¿Qué quiere decir el Yo creo que Alicia. Ahorita buscamos en el. Es más inteligente. Smart es, es inteligente. Más inteligente. Desde. Este smart sería, ¿verdad? Porque debe llevar el verbo tú. Sí. La letra P. Y le agregan ese T. Sí. Little B. Smart. Smart. Little A. Little B. Little B. Because. ¿Qué pasó, Marisela? Estás con duda en la cuatro. Déjame ver. Sí, me perdí. Por use the pronoun Alicia. It is the smart. Use the English. Eh, use the to be. To be. Uh -huh. Okay. Is the smart. Okay, the smartest. Okay. El verbo to be. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Y, 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 okay. 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 All right. All right. right. He says that he's All right. he's said, um, the he said. The The best. best. The best, <laughs> little C. The best dance. The best little C. Sí. Ah. Yes. yes. Las eh, seis. Of course, ladies are. Ponier. Little B. Little B. Uh -huh. Little Pony. B. Sí. Pony. Se cambia, ¿verdad? La... Ahí. Yes. yes. Esa, como ya tiene el verbo to be, sería solo for funny, funnier. Funnier, funnier, funnier. Así se pronuncia, funnier. Ajá, funnier. Okay. Number seven. This, the restaurant is bad, but the restaurant we ate last week was... Bad. Words down, no. Pero con qué lo estarías comparando? Was la semana pasada. En el que cenaron los tacos. Was worse, sí, verdad. Solo worse, little B. Solo was worse, ajá. Fue peor. Sí. Ah, little B. Okay. Was worse, entonces. Little B. Entonces solamente es worse. Words. Mm -hmm. La ocho. The biggest. The biggest. The biggest. What is? La letra A. Yes. Mm -hmm. Little E. La nueve. Antártica. The coldest place on earth. But. With place is is hostess oh, hostess hostess entonces es la letra A letra A sí porque termina en ah, vocal no, consonante sí, solo es, entonces agregas se duplica la T verdad uh -huh. bueno la 10 o sea el hábito en sí el tópico blue waves Es el soledad, Las ballenas el soledad, azules. Es Blue es waves. The largest. Ah, no, porque es en plural, ¿verdad? Are, are the, the largest. Are the largest. Uh -huh. Ajá. Animal. Sí. ¿Y cuáles son los, los serían las, las ballenas azules? Sí, ¿verdad? Sí. Como está en plural. Little C. Are the largest. Little C. Yes. Are the largest. Number 11. 
is uh, most faster with a uh, planet. The most faster. The most is the most irregular. This is irregular. No. It's a little C. Irregular. It's farther. No, es que farther es comparativo. Y aquí dice cuál es el más lejano en nuestro planeta. No. Es la luna es... o el sol. Entonces tiene que ser de most farther. Tiene que ser sí. Porque ya está el is. Is farther from our planet. Para mí, ¿qué tiene que ser? Sí. Veamos la... la... Which, ¿Cuál es? Ajá, puede ser porque... El... Porque abajo sí está comparando, ¿verdad? La sol. Which is farther from our planet? Ah, pero le faltaría el de verdad. Ajá, y también porque el farther es para, para decir, para Dan, o sea, Dan, porque es, es más lejano. Ah, sí, tienes razón, espérate, farther. no, no. Pero me suena raro. <risa> Yo creo que farther. sé, pero no estoy segura. ¿Me pone la presentación donde están los verbos irregulares? Farther, Ajá. ahí me acuerdo sí. haber visto esto. Sí, ahí está, pero lo tenemos en el superlativo sí, de Farc. Aquí, ¿verdad? Ahí, ahí, busquemos. En segundo. Activity. Vaya, es como allá, solo... allá en el regular, en el regular comparativo. A la derecha. Ay, yo te... Ahí está Farc. Te digo, ajá, como ahí no aparece un Dan. A ver, Farc. 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 No, no, no. Ajá. Y, ese, y ese no puede usarse el most fartes, porque fartes ya fartes es el más lejano. Pero no sí. va con solo ER. No, ese está aquí en, este, en esta. Ajá. Y ahí mira, eh, va, lleva el D y va con el ST. No sé, creo que es. Entonces sería the fastest. Poner de nuevo las opciones. Sí, es que farther es este, solo far, fartes. Fartes. En los irregulares. Aquí está, aquí abajo. Pero lleva el D y termina en EST. Y está. Eh. Y así no está ya, ponerlo. On my home. ¿Cuál es? es? Más abajo. Esta es más. Vaya, ahí está. Esta. Is. 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 Solo que pongamos la C, ¿verdad? Porque... Pero sí sería, fíjate. Porque el uso de is, aunque sea irregular. Sí. Sí, entonces, líder sí, ¿verdad? Dejémosle sí, a ver qué nos dicen. <coughs> ok, la 12, Monday, Easter, Swanee. No, vamos a arrancar con el resto. The Busies, sí, sí, es, así es, ¿verdad? El líder B. Líder B. La 13. La bus. La 13 es. The most expensive. No, no, no. Little C. Little C. Carmen, ¿qué opinas? Porque está comparando. Como lleva más de una. Sí, 
comparando. Sí, la va, ¿verdad? Sí. Solo se le pone el more y se deja. Ajá. Sí. Igual, ajá. Sí. Ok, sí. No, a ver, el 14. I really had. Increíble. The worst. Little A. Okay. 15. Tomás. Person. Los Tomás. Is, is the, the youngest. Most, is the youngest. Correcto. Sí. Little B. Is the. Youngest. Youngest. Y la 16. I think vanilla ice cream is good, but chocolate ice cream is better. Is better, little bit. Better. Uh -huh. Y no tendría que decir de. de quiero ver, de qué. Sí, 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 regular también. Sí, porque el gooder no. no, no. No procede. Entonces, better, little b. No, Pero y en, ahí no ocupamos el tan, sino que solo better. Solo better. Ajá, porque está al final de la oración, como lo habíamos mencionado. Cuando están al final... Sí. Eh, ya no ocupamos el dan porque luego de dan tiene que seguir algo más algo en este madre. caso ambos están antes del adjetivo es. comparativo Ajá, así es uh -huh. okay. thank you thank you teacher you're welcome bueno le vamos a hacer esa consulta <risa> <risa> teníamos una que sí, me tenemos, pareció sí, rara tenemos. era la once no Sí, la 11 de farther. Aquí estamos con esta duda, la 11. Porque, ¿cuál es el más lejano? Pensamos Ajá. que era el sí. Nosotros el... decimos porque no podemos usar de most farthest. No, porque ahí está preguntando. Entonces. Oh, God, we were in the middle of a discussion. <laughs> okay, let us check. Let's check because, yes, we need to explain some things or maybe to review. The idea of this exercise is to review uh, both topics is uh, uh, comparatives and superlatives because we are going to uh, study a different topic. So that's the purpose of this review and also that some of you had still doubts in regards of it. So let's see a volunteer for number one. Noemi, thank you. Mount Everest. Number one is Mount Everest is, is the tallest mountain in the world. Okay, yes, that is correct. Letter C, thank you so much. Juan Ricardo Alvarenga, number two, and Belen, number three. I know if I'm wrong, but are cats more intelligent than dogs? What do you think? Of course You're they are. You are correct. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Belen is a cat lover. <laughs> you must know that. <laughs> now let's oh. <laughs> number three, Belen. Who was the oldest person that ever lived? How can we find out? Excellent. Thank you so much. That is correct. Um, number four, a volunteer for number four. Rafael, Juan Rafael, eh, perdón, Rafael, y ok, vamos a levantar las manitas para llevar un orden. Está Juan Rafael, give us the number four, 
Andrea Vasquez, number five. Maria Angelica, number six. And Juan Ricardo Almenedemo, number seven. Uh -huh. Rafael. Number four. I think that Alicia is the smartest student in our class. Aha, uh -huh. excellent. Letter A. Good. Let's continue. Andrea, I think. Carla says that she had the best time of her life at the party. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andrea. Let's continue with number six. Of course, comedies are funnier than action movies. Excellent. Excellent job. It's letter B, right? Yes. Okay, number seven, Menedemo. This restaurant, I buy goods by restaurant. We have it like weeks wax. Horse. 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 Uh -huh. Horse. Thank you so much. Yes, correct. Thank you. Kenya, yeah. let's go. Mm -hmm. We have a question with that, uh, mm -hmm. with the seven. We think, we thought, sorry, that was worse than because it's a comparative. Ajá, pero los dos están antes. O sea, ya tenemos el primero que dice, este restaurante es malo, pero en el que comimos la vez pasada estuvo peor. Si decimos Dan, tengo que mencionar otra cosa después. Entonces ya serían tres. Y ya estamos ah, comparando okay. dos. Entonces le, les mencioné un meeting anterior que cuando va al final el comparative es porque ya se mencionaron anteriormente las dos cosas. Entonces el Dan ya no es necesario. O sea, si es comparative, pero no se menciona el Dan, ya está implícito que es comparative. Ya, porque ajá, ya los mencionamos anteriormente las dos cosas que estamos comparando. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much. Y, y es bueno porque ese es la, el motivo de esto, es para hacer como un repaso. Y si nos perdimos eso eh, o se nos había olvidado, pues para eso es, ya vamos a pasar a otro tema. Entonces es importante aclarar todas esas dudas. Thank you so much for your question. Eh, creo que iba con Kenya, la number yes. eight. What is the biggest country in South America? Is it Argentina? Or Brazil. Yes, excellent. Igual en esta cuando es pregunta, como eh, es eso, estamos preguntando, no estamos haciendo la comparación, haciéndola como en afirmativo. En afirmativo sí ponemos el dan, porque estoy afirmando, esto es mejor que tal cosa. Pero cuando es pregunta, no lo estoy afirmando, es una Nosotros duda. Nosotros dijimos que era una pregunta capciosa, picha. Porque si los países hubieran estado en la misma pregunta, hubiera habido un den. Mm -hmm. What is... Um... Ajá. Y como es una pregunta, no podemos usar el dan eh, en este caso de las preguntas, porque es, es solo para las afirmaciones. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Entonces, eh, disculpe, eh, que, para que me quede claro, en este caso sería... The biggest. No, siempre estamos comparando, pero en este caso es una pregunta. Ok. Yes, no. the biggest. Ajá, o sea, si yo voy a afirmar, es porque ya es un hecho, ¿verdad? Yo tengo uh -huh. comprobado que esto es mejor que esto. Entonces ahí estoy afirmando, yo uso el Dan, pero si es una pregunta, es porque no sé cuál de esas dos cosas es el mejor, el más grande. Entonces, por eso no se usa el dan en la pregunta. Ajá. Uh -huh. Pero sí. Aquí sería el, como pregunta cuál es el, cuál es el, el más, más grande. grande. El más y si, grande. Y si, okay. pusiera, y si dijera cuál es el más grande entre Argentina, cuál es el más grande, Argentina o Brasil. Uh -huh. Sí. Lo mismo, solo diría or sí. Brazil, Argentina or Brazil, but sería which is bigger, Argentina or Brazil, pero igual no usaría el Dan. To Brazil. Uh -huh. Any other question? No, teacher. Thank you. Okay. Uh, a volunteer for number nine. Let's raise your hands. 
Judy, thank you. Okay. Antarctica is the coldest place on earth, but which place is hottest? Excellent. That is correct. Thank you so much. Uh, Belen, number 10. Blue whales, uh, is that correct? Whales? Mm -hmm. Okay. Blue whales are, are the largest animals that have ever lived. Excellent. That is correct. Let's see number 11. I have Mr. Menedemo. Which is from a planet? Is it dice mom or dying son? <laughs> Farther, yes, letter C, right? Father. Mm -hmm. Farther. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Uh, volunteer for number 11, please. Carmen, thank you. Um, which is ah, perdón, sería I la doce, sí. <laughs> Monday is usually uh, the busiest, no sé cómo the se pronuncia. Busiest, busiest day of the week for me. Ajá, uh -huh. letter B, right? Yes, teacher. For spelling, excellent. Thank you so much, Carmen. Uh, Juan Ricardo Alvarenga for the next one, number 13. Frodo? Frodo said the gold ring was more expensive than the silver ring. Excellent, that is correct. Thank you so much for your answer. Let's see number 14. Mr. Menedemo. I rarely high die day of my entry, like yesterday. Badex. Badex doesn't Badex. exist. Badex no existe. Uh, Juan Ricardo Alvarenga, thank you. What would be the answer for 14? Worst. Worst. Uh huh, that is correct. Worst. I really had the worst day of my entire life yesterday. Thank you. Carlos Mario, continue for number 15. Good evening. Thomas is the most youngest person in our family. He's only seven years old. Mm. Uh. Do you agree? Is the youngest teacher. Is no. the youngest. Mm -hmm. Is the youngest. The youngest. Thank you. That is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenya, number 16. I think vanilla ice cream is good, but chocolate ice cream is better. Excellent. Thank you so much for all your answers. So um, is there any questions still? Todavía tienen dudas, preguntas acerca del tema. Yeah, I have a question mm -hmm. about the, the sentences uh, 11. 11 um, no se puede decir most farthest en este caso. La más lejana, no. Esa era mm. mi misma pregunta, teacher. <laughs> Eh, no, porque si estamos, dice, es lo mismo, por lo que es una pregunta, no lo puedo, si digo de most partes, es que lo estoy afirmando. Ah, ok. Que, que el caso de los comparativos. Uh -huh. Ok, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Uh, uh, question. Yes. Cuando di... A raíz de andar a de ahí más extremis en... Like yesterday, porque era, no era padre. Vamos a volver a la presentación. Aquí ah, está. Ya, ¿Sí ya, se ya, da ya. cuenta. Esos son irregulares y bad se convierte en worst. Ya, 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 ya
Okay, any other question? No question. Okay. So uh, moving to a different topic, we have uh, this conversation. And uh, in this case, we are going to give advice and tips to monitor personal and improve workplace operations. But mostly we are going to express uh, regrets or things that we could have done different, how to express those things. So let us practice the conversation. Okay. Um, we don't have audios for this one. So I'm just going to read and then you tell me if you have uh, any questions about vocabulary or pronunciation. Uh, it is the kitchen manager and Mary. How, where is Mario? He is late for this shift. Mario, goodness, I got a call that he is very sick. I should have told you earlier. Don't worry, he should have called me directly. If he had called to my phone, I could have found a substitute by now. I had time this afternoon, let me cover for him. Very simple, but if you have any questions, Questions? Should have a tall. Should have a tall. Um, Teacher, what is the meaning of cover? Cover es cubrir. Mm -hmm. Should we have a tall? Uh, sure, I have a question. Yes, Juan Ricardo Alvarenga. Um, could I say, let me cover him or? It is necessary to add four. No, you should. You can say, "Let me cover him" or "Let me cover for him." Is like uh, acting in behalf of. So the most uh, correct way to say it is, "Let me cover for him." Mm -hmm. Is the cover, but if you are, let me cover him, that's okay. Okay. Both ways. Got it. Thank you. Teacher, what is the meaning of shift? Shift es el turno. Un turno, no. hablando sobre trabajo, en este caso. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other question? No questions? Okay. Sí, question. Sí, question. Uh, yes, Juan Ricardo Menedemo. Chul ¿Qué significa? Ok, en este caso el should, acordémonos que es como para expresar consejos, recomendaciones, etcétera. El auxiliar should no tiene una traducción en sí como textual. Eh, igual, ¿verdad? Ya no deberíamos estar pensando en traducciones textuales. Esto es para expresar cosas en una situación como decir una condicional, algo irreal, porque esto de decir... Eh, I should have told you, te hubiera dicho. Podría ah, ser así, eh, como el pasado, pero ya no, pues ya es como irreal, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Entonces, es eh, eh, básicamente para expresar eh, lo que hubiera hecho diferente a algo. Entonces, para eso se usan auxiliares como should, could, Luego el auxiliar have también y el otro verbo iría en pasado participio, como él te hubiera dicho, llamado, etc. Uh -huh. Ese okay, es el teacher. tema gramatical que vamos a ver. Excel, excel. Uh -huh. Things that we could have done different in some situation. So um, I think this is pretty easy and simple conversation. So I'm not yes. going to create breakout rooms for this one, but I would like to know if there are some volunteers to role play this conversation. Okay, I have Belen and Juan Ricardo Alvarenga. You can start. Where is Mario? He is late for his shift. Mario? Goodness, I got a call that he's very sick. I should have told you earlier. 
Uh, don't worry. He should have called me directly. If he had called to my phone, I could have phoned a substitute by now. I have done this afternoon. Let me cover for him. Okay, thank you so much for your participation. You did an excellent job with pronunciation. Do we have another two volunteers? Thank you. Andrea? And Carmen Rene, thank you. Where is Mario? He is late for his shift. Mario? Goodness. I got a call that he is very sick. I should have told you early. Don't worry. He should have called me direct, di yeah, yeah, directly. Direct, directly. 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 <laughs> directly. If, directly. Yeah. If, if he had called to my phone, I could have found a substitute by now. I have time this afternoon. Let me cover for him. Okay, excellent. That would be the perfect employee. <laughs> so that word's kind of tricky. Directly. Directly. Okay, I have Moises and Juan Ricardo's Menedemos hand. Okay, and empiece. Moises. Where's Mario? He's later for this ship, my neck. No, Next. Don't worry, I'll show how. Ah, no, Dele. Se quedó. No, sí, Mario. Chicken down, worry. I'll show how we call a meal. No, tiene que seguir cuando dice Si Mario. quiere, empiece usted, Juan Ricardo. Empiece ah, usted. Vaya, ok, vaya. Ah, perdón, perdón, sí, 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 me equivoqué. Wish Mario, I like 40 chips. Mañana. Mario, goodness, I would a call that, that he is very sick. I should have told you earlier. Don't worry, I shall have a call me. Mañana. Directly. Directly. I'll call you a meal phone. To my phone. My phone. My phone. My phone. My phone. A call I be from a sushi. I buy Substitute. new. Substitute. 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 By now. By now. I have done this afternoon. Let me cover for him. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. So in this one, let's we let's complete this one. Look at the conversation and complete the statements. I'll give you for you some time to complete the statements. They are taken from the conversation that we already practiced. So if we see the number one, it says I you earlier and we have three spaces. What are we missing there? I should, I should have told. Uh-huh, I should have told you earlier. Mm -hmm. Let's complete the other number two and three. Should have called me directly. Directly. Uh-huh. Should have told me directly. Uh -huh. If he had called to my phone, I could have phone associated by now. Excellent. Those are the answers. Thank you so much. So as you can see, this is um, how to use teacher, perfect. Uh, teacher, uh, sorry, teacher. I have a question about expression. 
goodness. What is the meaning of goodness? Is that in the previous slide or in the conversation? Conversation. Which okay. one? Good goodness. Uh, goodness. Goodness. Yes. Es como decir Dios mío. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so we're going to be using perfect models to express regret, you know, regret or remorse. What are these words, regret or remorse about past actions? Call a wall how are of where? Any idea of these two words? Express regret or remorse. What comes to your mind? What's the meaning? Mm -hmm. That is correct. Es para expresar arrepentimientos o uh, acerca de situaciones pasadas. So things that we cannot change, right? But sometimes we express regret or remorse in some cases or situation. And for that, uh, we have to use should have plus past participle to talk about regrets. As you see, I should have sent the report sooner. And they can also take into a negative form by adding not to the auxiliary should. I shouldn't have asked her to carry those boxes, okay? And also could and would have are often used if I had plus the past participle. For example, if I had known you were sick, I could have gotten a substitute. The manager could have fixed your schedule if you had mentioned it to him. I would have come to work if I had received the schedule on time. So in this, it, as you can see in the second part of the chart, there are two ways that you can compose the clauses. The if clause can be at the beginning, okay? And the if clause is also called dependent clause. You know, remember, um, I told you a couple of days ago what a dependent clause is. You remember? Can you repeat, teacher? I don't hear. Uh, do you remember what is a dependent clause? Dependent clause. Mm -hmm. No, teacher. Okay, no worries. If you see, we have two sentences here. If I had known you were sick, that is one clause or a sentence. And then we have the second one. I could have gotten a substitute. This like is the, the connectors? Mm, not exactly. We have two clauses. When I say clauses, it means sentences. It's the same thing. But okay. one sentence is dependent. What does it mean? It doesn't have any sense by itself. Because if I just say, if I had known you were sick, I need another clause to have a, a complete, to convey a complete meaning, right? I could have gotten a substitute. But if I said, if I said I could have gotten a substitute, that one is independent because that it has sense by itself, okay? Is the idea clear? Or not? No, no teacher. No. More or less. <laughs> Más o menos. Ok. Eh, de, esto es solo para como conocimiento, ¿verdad? Eh, ¿Cómo lo vamos a hacer? Porque de repente se puede enredar uno como que porque aparece de dos formas diferentes. Eh, con el could y would have se utilizan con if I had y el pasado participio. 
Si ven, estas, cada eh, ejemplo está compuesto de dos cláusulas. Cuando decimos cláusulas, esto nos referimos a oraciones. Una es dependiente y la otra es independiente. Veamos el primer ejemplo. Si yo digo, if I had known you were sick, esa es una oración o una cláusula, pero esa es dependiente. Porque eh, si yo solo digo esto, if I had known you were sick, la idea queda incompleta. Es como que, ¿qué pasa? Necesito algo después. Y viene la otra oración. I could have gotten a substitute. Ahora ya tenemos completo el significado o lo que se quiso decir. Y si yo solo digo, I could have gotten a substitute, eso tiene la idea completa. No necesita nada más. Por eso esa se llama independiente. Cuando la dependiente, o sea, la que no tiene sentido sola o que empieza con if está al principio, la separamos por comas. ¿Ok? Veamos el segundo ejemplo. En el segundo ejemplo, la independiente está primero. The manager could have fixed your schedule. Esta es la, la, la independiente. El manager pudo haber arreglado tu horario. Ella tiene sentido por sí sola. If you had mentioned it to him. Esa es la dependiente. Cuando la dependiente es la segunda, no se separa por comas. Se fijaron en el ejemplo, ¿verdad? The manager could have fixed your schedule if you had mentioned it to him. Esa es la diferencia en cuanto a puntuación. Teacher. ¿Sí? En el módulo anterior parece que hacíamos una, pero la uníamos con if. Algo similar son, ¿verdad? Sí, se llaman condicionales. Y cuando la if clause, también le llamaban if clause, ¿verdad? Cuando la cláusula que lleva el if está al principio, se separa de la otra por una coma. Pero si la if está de segunda, ajá, sí lo ajá, si la if está de segunda, entonces no se separan por coma. Se hace de corrido, así como tiene el segundo ejemplo. Si miramos en el primero, está separado por una coma y la if es la que está de primero. En el segundo ejemplo, la if va de segundo y si se fijan, no está separada por coma. Entonces son dos, dos oraciones que se conectan, eh, pero una no tiene significado por sí sola. Necesita de la otra y la otra, digamos, ella no necesita nada. Puedo decirla perfectamente solita y tiene significado. Eh, yo puedo decir, eh, yo pude haber en, eh, encontrado un sustituto. Esa tiene sentido por sí sola. Pero si yo digo, si yo hubiera sabido que estabas enfermo y me quedo ahí, la idea queda incompleta. Entonces, por eso se llama dependiente. La que lleva el if es la dependiente, porque no tiene significado por ella sola. Necesito una segunda oración. Y la segunda oración sí es completamente tiene sentido por sí sola. A eso se refiere. Y eso es con, para hacer la diferencia en puntuación. Si la if está de primero, se separan por coma. Si la if está de segundo, no es necesario poner coma. Eso es como para decir, y si ya empecé con if, entonces ¿cómo voy a seguir? So, es, para eso no sirve, para hacer una diferencia se puede hacer de las dos formas. Por ejemplo, la primera, vaya, esa está, if I, if I had known you were sick, I could have gotten a substitute. O puedo hacerlo al revés, decir, I could have gotten a substitute if I had known you were sick. La diferencia es que ya no llevaría coma, pero el significado no cambia. Teacher, I have a question. Uh -huh. If... Uh... El if siempre va acompañado por la oración dependiente. Sí, sí, y siempre va a llevar el if y luego el sujeto y luego had y luego el verbo en pasado participio. Ok. Uh -huh. Esa es la estructura que llevan. Y para este ejercicio tenemos acá. Complete the sentence with should, could, would have, plus, past participle. Eh, ya tenemos el auxiliar que vamos a ocupar ahí. 
Solo necesitamos agregar have y el pasado participio del verbo que está en paréntesis. Y tenemos la 1 como ejemplo. If the servers had received proper training, coma, they could have answered the customer questions. Let's continue with the rest of them.
Finished? Finished, teacher. Yes, teacher. All right, let us yes, teacher. write your answers on the chat, please. The bartender. Show. Okay, let's write in the chat. Shouldn't have taken. Okay, that is correct, Andrea. Thank you so much. Shouldn't have taken. Um, good, Judy. Excellent. Number two, the servers. Would have been excellent, Andrea, Imelda. Thank you so much. Excellent. Judy, uh, yes, is correct. Would have been excellent job. Number, let's see, where would have been? Uh, you should ask. Number four, what is the answer for number four? Should have asked. Excellent, Belen, Judy, Andrea, Imelda. Yes, it's correct. Correct, thank you, ladies. Um, let's see. The cashier, number five. Shouldn't have taken. Excellent, Andrea, Imelda. Yes, correct. Shouldn't have taken. Judy and Maria, you're correct as well. Thank you so much for your answers. That's correct. Thank you. I, number six, should have called Noemi Belen. Excellent. I should have called. Yes. Good. Now, let's. Yeah, I, I have a question, teacher. Mm -hmm. I am confused <laughs> because. Um, Porque aquí ocupamos el should, could, um, could, have, y no ocupamos el, el have. El have está en todos los, eh, después de should, después de would y después de Ajá. could. Sí, porque lo ocupamos eh, el, el auxiliar en el have, en presente, digamos, y no lo utilizamos en pasado, como had, como el, el, el ejemplo anterior. Eh, ¿Cuál es el verbo? Ajá. Ah, el auxiliar, el verbo have, porque aquí está en presente, en, en indefinido y en, el, y en el ejemplo anterior, este, y por ejemplo, if had eh, está en, en pasado. Ah, porque aquí no estamos utilizando if. Ajá. Uh -huh. O sea, aquí estamos haciendo una sola oración. No estamos haciendo dos cláusulas, no llevamos cláusulas con if. Okay. Ninguna de estas, eh, solo esta, la primera, sí tiene el if, tiene las dos cláusulas. If the servers had received proper training, they could have answered the customer's questions. Pero las demás que estamos haciendo de la, de la dos a la seis, todas son eh, la independiente, ninguna lleva okay. if. Uh -huh. Por eso. Pero en, en ambos casos se utiliza siempre el, particip el pasado participio, ¿verdad? Sí, del verbo principal. Uh -huh. Ok, thank you, teacher. Excelente. Incluso, uh -huh. teacher, en la primera están la prim las dos. En la ah, primera como, están las dos. El verbo en pasado y como auxiliar. Ajá, porque en la primera es la cláusula que les mencionaba, o oraciones, digámosles oraciones para que sea más sencillo. Lo, lo, los términos gramaticales a veces confunden. Tenemos dos oraciones aquí. Tenemos la que va con if. La que va con if siempre lleva el had en pasado y luego el verbo principal en participio. Separado por una coma porque la if está de primero. Y luego tengo la independiente que es la que lleva el auxiliar más el verbo have más el otro verbo en pasado participio. ¿Okay? Esta, la uno lleva las dos oraciones. Pero de la 2 a la 6 es una sola oración, que es la independiente, la que no lleva el if. Ok, 
Any other questions? No teacher, thank you. Okay. So, ya vamos a practicar más el tema. Yo sé, a veces es un poquito confuso al principio o cuando hay una mezcla como la tenemos acá, ¿verdad? Que tenemos en algunos ejercicios las dos estructuras, en algunos solo uno y es un tema pues eh, bastante extenso eh, que requiere bastante práctica. Entonces, aquí, bueno, tenemos este ejercicio y tenemos este otro en el cual podemos practicar de cualquiera de las dos formas. Money has disappeared from the register machine, but I can't tell who's taking it. Tenemos una situación acá. Dice que ha desaparecido dinero de la, de la caja registradora, pero no puedo decir quién lo está tomando. Entonces podemos hacer la, la situación imaginaria y empezar una oración con if, ¿verdad? If money had, if money had disappeared from the register. Okay, como no puedo decir quién fue, podría decir I would have taken or I would, que hubiera hecho yo, I would have. <laughs> Written a secret note to the manager. <laughs> ok. <laughs> Entonces, y se me olvidó poner la coma. Mire qué bonito. ¿A dónde iría la coma? Dígame. <laughs> ya que me olvidó. Raise the oh, register. Ajá, después de después register. De register. <laughs> ok, sí pusieron atención. Entonces, if money had disappeared from the register, comma, I would have written a secret note to the manager. Ok. Entonces, yo puedo hacer la estructura completa usando dos cláusulas. La if, ok, basándome en la situación que estoy leyendo en el número uno y decir... If money had disappeared from the register, coma. Y ahora, ¿qué haría? Porque no le puedo decir quién es. Entonces, puedo escribir una nota. ¿Qué hubiera hecho? I would have written a secret note to the manager. Mm -hmm. O podría decir, nada más me dan la situación. Uh, money had disappeared from the register machine, but I can't tell who's taking it. Well, I would have written a secret note to the manager. Y si sí tiene sentido, ¿verdad? Si yo solo digo, bueno, yo hubiera escrito una nota secreta al manager. Puedo decirlo así nomás. O puedo hacer la estructura completa y hacerlo con las dos oraciones. La independiente al principio. If money had disappeared from the register, I would have written a secret note to the manager. Y recuerden que lo podemos dar vuelta. Empezar, I would have written a secret note to the manager if money had disappeared from the register. De ambas formas tiene sentido. Ok. Y esto como decíamos es eh, de estarlo ejercitando y practicando. Y ahorita pues que estamos eh, frescos con lo que acabamos de explicar. Podemos hacer las otras eh, cuatro oraciones, situaciones que nos restan. Y pueden hacerlo de cualquiera de las dos manos. Eh, escribiendo las dos cláusulas o solo la, la cláusula que no es dependiente. Mi recomendación es que lo hagan de las dos. Ah, escriban las dos cláusulas. O oh, si quieren hacerlo de, de las dos formas estaría bien también. Pero antes de irnos a este ejercicio. Me voy a salir un ratito para chequear si alguien más se unió a la meeting. Tenemos la attendance report. Sí. I was late. Ok, vamos a chequear Carlos Mario. Ya lo veo conectado. Present. Ok, thank you. Helen Dionelli. Present, Dion thank you. Juan Ricardo Menedemo. Present teacher. Ok. José Rudy Acevedo. 
José Rudy no se conectó entonces. Imelda Elizabeth. Present. Thank you. Y Susana, creo que no. Ok, solo los que mencioné no los tenía registrados al principio de la meeting. Y bueno, ahora tendría one on one Rubén de Jesús al final de la clase. Ahorita todavía tenemos unos 10 eh, minutitos para que hagamos el ejercicio que estábamos hablando. Lo vamos a hacer en grupo para que pues se vayan guiando con los demás eh, compañeros con lo que acabamos de decir ahora. Y vamos a seguir practicando el mismo tema mañana. So no worries. Teacher. Yes. I have two comments to say. Mm -hmm. The first one is from is for you. I love your Starbucks cup. Sorry, I said okay, thank you. <laughs> no more <Okay>. noise. <laughs> I want to say two comments. The first one is for you that I love your cup, a Starbucks cup. And oh. the second one is for Noemi that I love his uh, her new cut. Yes. You look really nice. very gorgeous, Noemi Vasquez. <laughs> Thank you, Belen. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thank you so much, Belen. So I'm going to create the breakout room so that you can um, write your sentences. What would you have done in, in the situations that we have uh, there? So let's. OK, here we go.
Okay, you're back again, I guess we have all of you here. So uh, volunteer for the situation number two, what do you have? What do you have for situation number two? What would you have done? If I had so who brought the three bottles of the best wine in the restaurant, I should have notified to the manager. Okay, if you had seen the person, you should have notified the manager. Okay, that's oh, excellent. Uh huh. Seeing. Uh, okay, yes. Okay. Excellent. Very good job. Thank you so much for your participation. Now let's see number three. My customer complained that my servers take too long to deliver the food. Volunteer. Nobody has that part or you want to go to sleep. Rafael, thank you. Customers complain that my service takes too long to deliver food. Should have hired for more chefs. I have had hired more personnel. Okay. Sounds like it has sense. Thank you so much, Rafael. Thank you. Let's see, the kitchen manager has been taking stuff from the storage room. Wow. Mm -hmm. Any ideas for this one or you didn't finish that? Teacher, in our group, we made two for the fifth, the five. For number five. Okay, you can share that one. Mm -hmm. Tell me you can share the first one. Tell me. Oh, yummy. Creo que yummy era la otra. No recuerdo. Bueno, la, 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 bueno, la segunda era, teacher, if, is, if the employers, if, if the employers can understand can understood the schedule could have arrived late to work okay and the second option tell me reacciona i think she's sleeping <laughs> es que no sé quién es la otra tell me porque no responde se está riendo Es que no la tengo completa. Eso ¿Y estaba tú? buscando. ¿Y dónde Judy está la, la otra? otra, no sé. Yo no, solo tengo la que acaba de decir. Ay, no, qué vergüenza. Yo solo tengo la que acaba de decir. Y Luigi Sketch is improved, improved. They could have understood it better. Ah, no, esa es la primera. Sí, ajá. Okay, no one is enough, that's okay. Sí, no solo way. esa tengo. Alcanzamos a hacer la demanda. Okay, good. Uh, does anybody if else? If I had now, mm -hmm. the kitchen manager has been taking stuff from the storage room. I should have, um, I should have, um, how can I say, poner, Cameras. I should have installed surveillance cameras. Okay, now. Uh huh. Yes, and that is that is the topic of the of the um monitoring personnel, and it is about surveillance. Um, I think it's somewhere there. Estaba por ahí surveillance cameras. But yes, we, it's a good idea. So thank you so much for your participation. So um, I think that tomorrow we will practice more this topic because it requires a lot of practice. I said that you got the idea and you did a very good job with the exercise. So now it's a difficult topic, but 
we can practice more tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining and hope to see you tomorrow. Okay, see you. Good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Good night.